Okay, let's move on to uh, yeah. Venezuela, where the United States is doing electric coup boogaloo number two. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> it worked so well the other 10 times. <laughs> so uh, we have an article via the Wall Street Journal. Yes. Uh, in secret talks, U.S. offers amnesty to Venezuela's Maduro for seizing power. Calling it a long shot American attempt fueled by opposition efforts to document the president's overwhelming defeat at the polls. So, according to this article, the U.S. is pursuing a long shot. Well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. They 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 cite people with information on the matter. Um, these are almost certainly U.S. government officials. The U.S. has discussed pardons for Maduro and top lieutenants of his who face Justice Department indictments. Said three people familiar with the Biden administration deliberation. One of these people said the U.S. has put, quote, everything on the table to persuade Maduro to leave before his term ends in January. Another person familiar with the talk said the U.S. would be open to providing guarantees not to pr pursue those regime figures for extradition. The U.S. in 2020 placed a $15 million bounty for information leading to Maduro's arrest on charges of conspiring with his allies to flood the United States with cocaine. <laughs> obviously untrue and uh i had some reporting which i might i might uh put out through active measures but i i've I put it out through the gray zone before about um how the u.s knowingly supported uh basically the largest cocaine trafficker in latin america uh the former mm. president of honduras named juan orlando hernandez uh but they've you know decided that um rather than their allies it's it's maduro who is doing that um Juan Orlando Hernandez has been sentenced to 45 years in prison. Um, but I wanted to point out, because I think that we kind of uh, predicted this, um, that mm -hmm. I, I published this video two weeks ago where a United States congressman offers help to uh, Maria Machado, Maria Corina Machado, the opposition leader, uh, with exiling Maduro, so this is essentially what they're what they're doing now. So you can see kind of how the sausage is made here. In the same uh, interview with uh, members of the House of Representatives, uh, Machado said that uh, that she would respect the results of the election, and that you know she was convinced that she would win. But she said the government won't steal this one. Essentially, um, of course, that's no longer the case. But I just want to play this really pay quick very clip. close attention to her response. If there is truly 80% that are against the, the regime or thereabouts, who is going to lead the popular peaceful, and once me, and I want to say peaceful, uprising of, of the Venezuelan people? And then second, my second question is, because it can't be you, I don't think. We'll see how it plays out. The second question, have you offered exile to Maduro? And I recommend whoever this person is, and maybe the United States can help you with this to offer him exile. It often happens. It works. So those are my two questions. It's interesting. I, uh, your second question. Certainly some actors abroad could offer some of the members of the system and the, the, the Chavista world a possibility to live safely abroad but it's only us who can offer some of them the possibility of a future, a secure and safe future in Venezuela. And, and, and that requires a true and profound and, and let's say cautious negotiation, which, whose, which terms I, I believe I should not uh, make public uh, beforehand. So, I mean, as you can see here, this this video was originally from February. I published it two weeks ago. Uh, yes. This idea of of you know getting rid of Maduro just by like offering him a beach house in Costa Rica or something uh, has been long in the works. It's been done in coordination with the Venezuelan opposition, um, and uh, I would say that there's an argument that we beat the Wall Street Journal to that story. 
Yeah. Oh well. I mean, we 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 beat everyone to the to the story. Um, the, I was just going to say, um, if you're gonna, we're going to cap off the scent of this segment now, just really quickly because this is one of my my favorite historical anecdotes of all time. Uh, one of the speakers in that video said, "Well, you know, he, he can just go into exile, and that often happens, and he'll be happy there." Um, it, it, what very few people know is that when um, the, the Shah of Iran was overthrown um, by uh, in by the Islamic Revolution in, in at the start of seventy nine, um, no country would offer him permanent uh, exile, including like his former. Uh, kind of the, the Britain, you know, like the country that led the coup that installed installed him in 1953, which is the it's the anniversary of that today. Just to make this topical, um, the, finally the US managed to pressure Panama, um, uh, which was at that time led by a a left wing dictatorship that was in, uh, implementing all sorts of actually really great like social reforms, um, and the US like heavily pressured them and offered them a lot of concessions to take uh, the Shah. Now, um, the, the, the pa 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 Panamanian leader, uh, General Omar Torrios, um, he absolutely hated the Shah, so deliberately tried to make his stay there as miserable as possible. So, in, I mean, it, it, he tried to hasten the Shah's death because he was suffer suffering from cancer. So he um, uh, gave him inadequate medical care. He also made the Shah pay for his 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 stay there and all his food and, the, and all the food for his his kind of entourage and and, and whatnot um, and he also to add insult to injury um uh, appointed as the shah's shah's chief bodyguard a militant marxist zoology professor who spent um all of his time lecturing the shah on how he deserved his fate as he was a tool of american imperialism um which is like kind of just like god level trolling that we should all aspire to i think of imperialist <laughs> yeah. pieces of shit but um, but yeah, well, sorry, sorry. There, there's sorry a, to there's a couple, no, don't worry about it. Uh, there's a couple more things I I, I would cover uh, with Venezuela. The other Go story, um, I'm thinking that we ju I just uh, I do that as a little investigation. Um, I think so. We're, I we're, think so. we're running short on time. Um, People want to see it. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they let's, do. Let's let's uh, let's round off with the Afghan newsroom. Let's do it. Right now. No, 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 no. Let's let's finish uh, with Venezuela, and then and then I'll do the Afghanistan stuff. Uh, oh, okay. uh, I'll do that okay. independently. Um, oh, yeah. okay. So we have uh, I, because I think this is just funny, and why not end things on a high note? Uh, Biden yeah. voices support for new elections in Venezuela. Um, so President Biden was asked uh, whether he supports new elections in venezuela his response i do apparently i do doesn't mean what you think it does because the white house uh had to come out and uh issue a correction so their correction uh the president was speaking to the absurdity of maduro and his representatives not coming clean about the july 28 elections the national security council said in a statement it is abundantly clear to the majority of the Venezuelan people, yada, 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 uh, Maduro mm. lost. Um, but, but they're not, they're not uh, actively uh, calling for new elections, as, uh, as Biden suggested to a reporter. Um, the Orinoco Tribune, uh, I would, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys do not follow them, go ahead and yes. do that now. Indispensable reporting on Venezuela. Um, so they have some more context that I would I would add because this is not the first time that um, they've had to change their tune, the, the White House. Uh, specifically, it was um, Anthony Blinken last time who said that uh, he recognized um, Edmundo Gonzalez, uh, the stand-in for Maria Karina Machado, um, as the president. Um, just days later, the State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller, uh, notorious genocide defender clarified that the U S is not at yet at that point. Um, so, I mean, I think it's just like the, the Biden administration is sundowning, but he's still kind of, uh, yeah. having this faux pas, shall we say? Um, and we'll still, just, I, no, I just well, want to play I this. I mean, it's just, it's just as a, sorry, go ahead. Well, no, go, go ahead. No, you say what you're going to say and then I'll, I'll play. Well, no, the, I was just going to say that like that we've got, well, yeah, I just, I just think as well that like, it's just kind of, it, it, this is like end of empire stuff where it's like, nobody's really in charge apart from the secret government. You're not allowed to know about who are still whirring on in the background while the quote unquote commander in chief has basically been 
been sent to an old folks home and is not authorized to say anything um and his appointed anointed successor is literally standing on a platform of i will announce my policies after the election yeah and it's just like you know this is it it it, 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 it it's farcical and frightening but also very funny <laughs> you have to you have to earn my policies with your vote <laughs> rather than yeah you know, <laughs> earning your vote with my this policies is, that's <laughs> astonishing astonishing like so yeah, we'll play we'll play Maduro's response to this latest Biden slip up. El día de hoy ha dejado atónito al mundo porque desmienten al presidente. El presidente Biden declaró de manera intervencionista sobre los asuntos internos de Venezuela, que solo nos competen a los venezolanos, a las instituciones venezolanas. Entonces él da una opinión y a la media hora lo desmienten unos voceros del Departamento de Estado. Al final ¿Quién manda en Estados Unidos? ¿Quién lleva la política exterior de Estados Unidos? Que el presidente dice algo y después su propia cancillería y la propia Casa Blanca lo desmiente. En todo caso, yo rechazo plena y absolutamente que el gobierno de Estados Unidos pretenda convertirse en la autoridad electoral de Venezuela o de cualquier lugar del mundo. So I think that's the question that many of us have been asking for well over a year now who is yeah. running the show hey everyone um if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content uh please give us a follow on twitter or subscribe to us on youtube it will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs thank you